of all the things that you could do, why science? And what do you love about science? It's really about knowledge and understanding the world around you. So why not? Every kid comes out in the world trying to figure out what's happening. And so I was one of them. Exactly what I was going to pursue changed from year to year. But uh, at the heart of it, space was always there from when I was a little girl. I thought about being an astronomer, but I ended up going to college and I was an engineer, chemical engineer, and also did medicine because I wanted to do biomedical engineering, but the space never left. It never wow. left. Hey, Jameson will be making her first trip in space today, and she's also very enthusiastic and ready to fly. And liftoff, liftoff of Endeavour on America's 50th space shuttle flight. Describe what it was like when you went into space. The first thing I saw in space was my hometown, Chicago. True story, no kidding. My commander asked me to come up to the flight deck and look out the window after we got on orbit and we were preparing to change this rocket into a laboratory. I looked out the window and there was Chicago. Looked like it does on a map that I learned when I was a little kid. No kidding. And I was so excited and I had this huge grin on my face because I was thinking about that little girl I had been on the south side of Chicago who just assumed that she would go into space. And What a wild oh, moment. It was, it, was, it was pretty special because it, it really it was just a smile, right? It, it's just a smile, an acknowledgement and you go back to work. Um, but then you know that you're connected to this world, to this universe in a much deeper fashion. Talk to me about that connection in terms of being a woman in this field and being a woman of color. What's that like? So I don't actually have anything to compare it to, right? <laughs> because always having been a, a woman, a woman of color is, this is what it is. Um, I should say this though, when I applied to, to the astronaut program, it didn't even cross my mind that I would be the first African-American woman in the astronaut program and are going into space, nor the first woman of color in the world going into space. It wasn't until after I applied, after I was accepted, and I got all these calls from the news media that it dawned on me. Because I just wanted to go into space, period. That was it. I just wanted to go into space. A so what, do you see it as a conscious decision that you were included? No, I think, I think yes, as a conscious decision, I was included, but not because I was an African-American. I would without trying to sound uh, overconfident, I was good at what I do. I was good at my job. I, I, I had every qualification, every reason why to be chosen. Taylor, let me ask you, when you hear that, um, what goes through your mind? I just think that's how it should be. You know, you never really think about your skin color or what you look like, but it's always about the passion and the dream that you have. At first, before people, you know, made me become aware of my color, I just thought I was a girl that wanted to go to space just like her. So I think that's how a dream starts. And then I love how she just followed through it and inspired other girls, especially girls like me when I was little. What have you seen in terms of changes in the STEM fields for people of color? For women and for people of color, some things have changed and some haven't changed very much at all. The issue is, is how do we make sure that they're included? For me, the inclusion is vital. It's critical because we need all hands on deck, right? And there are people in the world right now who have incredible uh, talent, skills, perspectives on the world who are not being included in posing the questions to the to the problems that we face the world today. And I want to fight to make sure that they have that ability to bring their perspectives. But there's something that has to happen before then. We have to make sure that the schools actually have the capacity to train students, to educate them to their level of excellence. You're concerned that you're not seeing yet as much opportunity for children of color or all children that you would like to see? I, I think that our access to really outstanding education, excellent education for every child is not, it does not exist. Is and it even worse some, for children of color? It's worse for children of color. And I think in some ways, um, in some ways we are getting so recalcitrant in this. We don't, we ask the question right now, we're in the middle of, 
of a pandemic. And we asked the question about, should we spend more money on schools to make them safe? There is only one answer to that question. Taylor, some would also say that role models and representation matters. Definitely. That's why I um, agree with representation and inclusion and diversity and things like that, because I feel like uh, if a kid can see it, they can be it. And I feel like, like she was saying earlier, bringing different things to the table. When you get into something and someone says, oh, you have to do it this way, you have to do the same way as other people, I don't agree with that, because I feel like we should celebrate our differences and that we're all different and we bring new creativity and ideas to the table. So, yeah, people like her to inspire kids every single day. So representation definitely does matter. When, when May you look I add ahead. something? May I add yes, something? please. I yes. want to add that, you know, it's reflexive, Taylor, right? <laughs> it's reflexive in the sense when I see you, you bolster my energy as well. And all the things that you've done, whether it's making sure that children get to see uh, different movies that you go and you bring thoughts and ideas to international groups and organizations, that's important for us as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. What is your hope for the future of young Black women and young Black men going into the fields like the one you have been in? So the first thing I want to say is there has been a remarkable explosion of young women who are going into the engineering and who declare that they want to go into engineering. The issue has been how they've been received once they get to the engineering school, which is one of some of the same things I ran into when I was in college. And so what my hope for the future is that we will hold professors responsible for how they disposition the talent that we put in their hands. And what I mean by that, if you have people who are accepted into these universities, they come in with good scores, it is the responsibility of the professors to develop it, not to weed it out. My hope for the future is that when I see people like Taylor, right, that she will be the norm and that that energy and enthusiasm that she has shown every day, that when she gets into a university, people are not going to um, drag that out of her, that she should not have to repeat some of the same kinds of, I'm going to do it despite you, that I had. Taylor, what's your hope for the future? Just to see everybody who doesn't feel represented now in the future, and not even on only STEM fields, but every single field. I feel like it starts when you're a kid, because that's when that dream really sparks, because people always overlook you and underplay your um, qualifications when you're a kid. They don't really have confidence in you, and that can really damage somebody's spirit. So I feel like it always starts as a kid, and I hope for the future there are more girls and men who look like me in the STEM field. Taylor, do you feel that the sky is the limit for you? Definitely. The universe, the sky. I feel like your <laughs> mind is the limit. You can get anywhere with whatever you think. Affirmations and the way you think about yourself and what you put out in the universe yeah, is really what you can make your reality and your own destiny. So. It's important that women, when you have a seat at the table, you don't sit there and act just like everybody else and mind your table matters. That you make people do the right thing and you hold them to account. You have to acknowledge your right to be there. You have to believe that you have the right to be there, to exercise your power. You have to believe you have something to contribute. Deep down inside, you have to believe that. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.